In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how I use a single strobe to create the look of sunlight in the studio. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and even though I love to shoot in the studio, sometimes I like to emulate the look of natural light, whether that's a soft overcast day or it's hard, bright, crisp sunlight. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do with just a single strobe in this particular photo deconstruction. Now, when my subject came out in this beautiful dress, it reminded me of a shoot that I had done once on location. It was in this beautiful white scene. So it was all these white walls and stairs and corners. And I loved it because it was bathed in beautiful, hard sunlight. But on the day of this shoot, we were of course shooting in my studio and it was a cloudy day. So what could I do in my studio space to really bring my inspiration to life? So I started off with my set. And the set in this case is nothing more than a V-flat world V-flat. And I placed it directly behind my subject. And I actually had her pose back in it. Rather than having her stand in front of a white seamless background or against a white wall, which would be very two-dimensional, I actually had her pose in the V-flat so it surrounded her. So it looked like a corner. It looked like she was out on location. Now, this particular V-flat is a little bit shorter. So I made sure that my poses worked within it. Instead of her reaching up or towards the sky, everything was pressing against the walls or reaching out in front of her rather than up. So I did have this constraint, but no problem. I worked within it. All right, so now to the question of, we built the set, but how do I emulate sunlight in the studio? Well, what is sunlight? Sunlight is an extremely hard light source. The shadow edges are extremely defined. And so how do I do this in the studio? Well, first of all, I can do so by using a bare bulb or a hard light modifier. Basically, one of the rules of lighting is the larger the light source is compared to the size of the subject, the softer the light. So I wanna go opposite that. I don't want big umbrellas or soft boxes or any bounce light. I want hard, direct light. And by the way, if this concept is new to you, I've actually done a YouTube video dedicated to this topic. And I've put the link in the description below for you to check out and to catch up. All right, so in order to achieve hard light, what I need to do is make sure it's hard direct light. So in this case, I've selected a Pro Photo D2 with no modifier at all. So it's just bare bulb. Now, if I want really hard light, if you've got a speed light, that is going to give you extremely hard light. And why is that? Well, it's, it's a little bit smaller. The Pro Photo D2, the front of it is a little bit larger comparatively. And remember, a larger light source will be a little bit softer. So how do I move that even more towards sunlight? What I can do is I can back that light source up away from my subject. The further away it is, the harder that light source gets. And you can see that I've backed it up quite a ways from my subject and I've raised it up to a higher angle to emulate an angle of sunlight. So those are giving me the ingredients I need to emulate this feel of this clean, high key location bathed in sunlight. Now, before we take a look at what I was able to capture in camera, let's actually talk about my camera. For this shoot, I shot with my go-to camera and lens combo, the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105. Now, when I am shooting in the studio, I almost always grab this camera lens combo for full length shots. When I'm on location, maybe I'll grab a 24 to 70 to shoot a narrower depth of field, or maybe I'll shoot with a 50 or a 35. But in the studio, you can be pretty sure that this is going to be the lens combination I grab because it gives me so much versatility. All right, so let's talk about my camera settings. I was shooting 1 200th of a second, F8, ISO 200. There's no reason for me to shoot a particularly wide aperture because I'm not trying to have a narrow depth of field. So this is going to make sure the subject is nice and tack sharp throughout. All right, now let's pop over and see what I captured. All right, so this is the end shot. And I wanna take a look at a few things in this frame before we break apart what was done in post-processing. So first of all, you can see that I have her filling that set. All it is is the V-flat and then a white piece of seamless paper on the floor. Uh, I have her at an angle so that it creates a really strong dynamic diagonal line. And compositionally, I think the way that she's posed brings your eye throughout the frame. I feel like you start at her face, you move down her leg, you move back up, up her arm, back to her face. And so you're continually moving throughout the frame. Now I did shoot several other poses and different uh, ways that she would embody and, and fill this space. And this is one that I think was really successful. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about color in a moment, but I also think that her eyes being that, that super saturated bright pop of color brings you back to the subject's face so you're not lost in the frame. 
This is the end shot, nice and clean and poppy and bathed in sunlight. But let me show you where we started off. So this is what was captured in camera. And if I were looking at this, this would not be something I would consider successful. It doesn't feel like sunlight and it doesn't feel clean and poppy like that set. So as I'm analyzing this, I know that I need to get rid of some of the seams in the V-flat, which is no problem, easy to Photoshop out. I need to extend the white background to the side. Uh, I also want the shot to look much warmer because I want it to feel like sunlight. So I know that I'm going to play around with white balance and color grading. And I also want to continue this highlight that's on her legs, which we did put baby oil gel on her legs. I want to continue that down her leg. So those are some of the things that I'm analyzing uh, that I want to do for my post-processing. So this first is what I did with color grading. So this color grading was achieved in Capture One. What I did is I warmed up the white balance quite a bit, I increased the contrast, I popped the whites, and I added yellow to the highlights. And so that's what's really giving this warmth overall. I also thought that this warmth was a nice contrast to her eye makeup. All right, so now let's see what was done in Photoshop. And fundamentally, Photoshop was where all the cleanup happened. You can see that I got rid of the wrinkle on her dress, I extended the background, cleaned up the floor, smoothed out the back of her head, and so this is where everything gets clean and polished, just like my style. And so here's where we started, not as successful, and here's where we ended, which was exactly what my vision was. What's great about this image is it gives me the feeling of sunlight, but it was achieved with just a single strobe in my studio. Now, if you want to learn more about really having control over a single strobe and making stunning images with just one light source, you'll definitely want to check out my video and lighting recipe guide called One Light Artistry. In this guide and in this course, I show you exactly what you need to know to control your strobes. Everything from distance of light to power of light to feathering the light to modifier choice and how you can make a wide range of different effects, even if you only have one light and simple modifiers. So you're definitely going to want to check that out at learnwithlindsay.com and the link is in the description below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, definitely give me some love, drop some comments, like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.